people often ask me, what's the best Linux distribution? And it always surprises them when I say Linux Mint. But, Imolo, you're saying, you're a Gen 2 user through and through. And I am. Gen 2 is the best distribution for me. But overall, I don't think anything beats Linux Mint. And let me show you why I believe that. Before we start, we're going to have to get over the elephant in the room. Linux has one major problem for not taking over in the desktop space, and that is people don't install operating systems. There's a famous quote by uh, Richard Storman that demonstrates this point quite clearly, I think. Uh, I've never installed GNU slash Linux. So yes, installing a different operating system is a huge issue. If you don't believe me, just check how much uh, effort Google's putting into uh, its new Fusion operating system when Windows 10 goes end of life, just to try and tackle this problem. So we need to ignore the actual putting an operating system on, and that's where people like us come from, and probably why this video is going to help you to recommend a distribution to other people. So we're in our Linux Mint live USB. We've ignored the issue previously highlighted. As you can see, there's a button to click to install Linux Mint. And let's just see how many mouse clicks it takes to install this operating system. So I've counted 8 clicks, bearing in mind I needed to set my keyboard up for a foreign language, a 7 for an American friend, but not bad, that's pretty damn good. Also included in that is 4 boxes I had to fill in for my name, computer name and password and confirming password. That's really good, that's less than Windows needs to set up and it just shows you how the Mint team have really thought about what their target audience is. Another thing that I like about Mint more than other distributions is the way they handle licensing. Now I know for some people licensing is a big thing and I respect that, that's totally something that's your choice. However for newbie users coming to Linux people need to remember they don't care about free and open source. What they care about is their software works. And Mint knows this, so when you install, the only extra box you need to click is the extra one for multimedia stuff. Once you're in the system, there's no more questions about it, it's just done. Or you click on a EULA if you need to, to install something. Like, that's how it should be. None of this stuff like you get with um, Fedora and Debian, where you need to set up non-free repos users especially new users just don't care about this stuff and that's why we need to be recommending distros like linux mint to help people get used to linux before they start forming their minds up about how they want to run their own computers anyway this installation process is nearly done and we're going to get ready for the second stage which is uh, the first boot so here we go, we're at the login screen. Type in that password that I set earlier on. And I'm greeted to this lovely display. And it's welcomed me to the operating system. Now as a new user this is brilliant because it just sets everything up just as I need to. So first thing it's going to show me to do is themes. I'm going to have a little play around to see what it is. And let's be honest, people don't care about anything else. They care about how their computer looks. Perfect choice about this is number one. I'm going to set my favourite colour, have a look at the uh, different uh, styles that I can use, which I'm guessing is icons. And uh, decide I like the default more than anything else, but with my purple. Next one is system snapshots. Now, I know what a snapshot is, but a general user doesn't. So it's really good that they've set up time sync like this, ready to go. And uh, hopefully they make it so it's easier for a user to do, but it's quite a good 
simple backup system, I think, and I like the way they do that. I'm just going to keep it the default. Driver manager. Now, obviously, this is a Ubuntu thing from back in the day that's been brought over, but this thing was absolutely game changing when it came out. And this is what sorted out NVIDIA drivers back in the day when they used to be a nightmare. You just clicked a button and it did it for you. Like, absolutely brilliant. Third one is getting our system up to date. So we're logging to like that and I love the fact that it's got the little blue box at the top that's easy just telling you you've not picked a mirror close to you so your download speeds might be slow. I, I love that. And it instantly goes and tells you which the fastest mirrors are. I'll leave that running for a few seconds. Pick the fastest one for me. Do the same for the second one. And I say, it's just a nice little quality of feature thing that most of us forget to do anyway setting up the, the nearest mirror. But it's just points you into it so you can't forget and then my system's going to update for me I don't need to know anything that's going on it's all handled for me love it if anything the only criticism I'd have as a new user is how many times I've typed my password in <laughs> but I think they've got to get used to that that's a Linux thing and a good thing as well See how painless that was. One of the things about Mint that I also respect is they don't need to show off. They don't need to shout about how great they are. They just show it in their work, unlike some other distributions. But I'm not sure which one. Alright, next one on their system settings. I'm not really going to play with this on here, but it just shows the user how they can change settings pretty fast. So where to get new packages from. And I really like how it's got the featured stuff right at the top. Telling you some like, good programs up there, like you've got GIMP and Dropbox and things. What do you need over? Hey, hang on a minute. What's that? Hang on a minute, I recognise that name. What's my new Pegasus tier Patreon support doing as a featured app in Mint? In Synaptics. Well, while we're here and we're seeing him, let's all, uh, let's all thank. GK Sudo in the comments for being such a great guy and keeping his channel going. And obviously, if anyone else would like to join my Patreon, please check out the link in the description. But obviously, if you can't afford it, I'm happy with a like and a subscription. And once again, thank you very much, GK Sudo. Another thing I like about Mint is the default applications. That it picked everything's quite sane so we've got a paint clone here we haven't got full gimp and i'm supposed to be honest like i kind of think we should have gimp and every program it's a good but do most people actually ever use it maybe just having a little paint program like this is better and then that like uh, like they did before in the in the synaptic packet manager have it as a feature i think they made the right choice there uh, I've also got text editor and I like that they don't call it by its actual name and call it just a text editor so people can find it. Little things, simple things for simple minds I guess. Internet, we've obviously got Firefox as the main browser. Firefox at the moment is the best browser we've got so uh, yep until something like Ladybird takes over this is the one that we want to do. And we've got Thunderbird Mail. Now email and linux does suck let's be honest everyone uses webmail but let's just see how quickly this could add my gmail account to it because some people say this is hard to do so let's go through oh well yeah that that was no drama at all was it LibreOffice installed and obviously for the uneducated oafs you can switch it to tabbed which looks like the ribbon UI 
Ugh. There we go. And obviously, yeah. Cal Pad for the Excel clone. Right, sound and video. No VLC. Wish that was around. But let's see if I can play a video file with this. Yeah. Playing lovely. Good tune as well. Do check out um, Rue's uh, YouTube channel. So the first one I'm going to try is Minecraft. So I've signed in with my Microsoft account. Now let's see if I can play. No absolute issue at all doing that. You know what? I've had worse trouble getting this working on Windows than I have on the Linux Mint. And we'll ignore the um, oversensitive mouse. QEMU might be quite good, but uh, I've not mastered how to do OpenGL emulation properly just yet, and mouse, so uh, that's on me. I'm not going to show you Steam, we all know how Steam looks. Mm. One thing I want to draw my attention to is I've not used the terminal once today. And I don't know if you noticed that. And it's not that it's not there. It's highlighted right down the bottom for you. But I don't need to do anything that I don't want to do in a terminal. Both GUI and command line work seamlessly. But it's not the next video, is it? Without running a Neo fetch. Hang on a minute. Have they installed NeoFetch by default? Mad lads. Absolute mad lads. But there we go. Why do I think Linux Mint is the gold standard desktop distribution for Linux? You've seen it in this video. Everything has been smooth sailing. Yes, it might not be your last distro that you'll ever use. But it's a damn good one to start with. And I wish there was Linux Mint when I started back in 2001, so I knew what was the Linux issue and what was me being stupid issues. So I hope today that you're either going to take away from this as that if you're a Windows user and you're thinking about trying Linux, then give Mint a try. And if you're a bit of a Zelia that likes forcing your own distro like a Fedora or an Arch Linux or even a Gen 2, Let's give the users a good start, yeah? Let's start them off with Linux Mint, the gold standard. And well done to the team over over there. Anyway, guys, I had fun making this one, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Keep compiling.